indeed from Kamsini Nanani. And yes, you are with us on Hello Auntie. You love to it. I just love to be full around my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, too much information. Uh, <laughs> right, good afternoon again. And uh, right now what we're doing is we're getting into the first topic of the day. We are going to be talking about robotic surgery now. How uh, well known is this procedure in our country? Uh, are people opting for it? Or are they shunning it and going back to old school? Where would they prefer a doctor who doesn't use robotics to go through a particular surgery? Well, let's get in line with the doctor and find out from him uh, who's in the studio with us. We've got... We don't have enough to spot to talk about. No, unfortunately. We have a arms. We have Dr. Lerchik Singh, who's the consultant in neurology, surgeon of the body street group. Welcome to the studio. Thank you, Mr. Singh. Good afternoon. All right, let's just run, jump right in. Um, what, what do you mean by a robotic surgery? Yes, I think for some people who's not heard of the term, it's a little bit worrying in the end, you know, getting a robot to put on you. Exactly. Why, why, after all, human beings are so well engineered to get a real the fact is, over the last uh, 20 30 years, surgery has been more and more into uh, a lesser degree of invasiveness. So, the terms chemo surgery, I'm sure, are the same as well. And can do the same task, but with very, very little in the way of transmission, inflicting on the patients. And, uh, of course, it's less pain, less pain. Skin okay. surgery, however, does have its limitation. And uh, I've got here two instruments just to demonstrate that. Okay. Now, this is a typical uh, four steps in chemo surgery. And in chemo surgery, of course, you punch those in the tummy. Right. And the tummy acts as a function, as a pivot. Mm -hmm. So you have this thing inside the patient's tummy. And whatever you do, all you can do is you can take back to the limitations. Now this is a modern instrument and you can see here similarly this is a pair of forceps but it can do a lot more. Okay. You can rotate, uh -huh. you can incubate, oh, wow. you can open and close. Okay. So Could you just hold it there Dr. Will Capture? Can I just try and capture that? Wow, how interesting. So, so it gives you a lot more freedom. Right. It's almost like, this, this thing is almost like a miniaturized wrist inside the tummy. So they call this thing a wrist. Okay. And the wrist, yes. And the wrist. And it just moves around and you're able to control it basically. That's, that's right. And uh, the, 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 the control of this thing is also very intuitive. The way these controls are designed, you, you just hold your fingers and you control the tummy. And the instrument will mimic exactly what you want. So you can be doing that doing stitching. Okay. Okay. You're holding the, uh, the joysticks in your hand, doing stitching with And the instrument uh, is mimic. So you have a monitor that literally you are able to watch this and then. Yes, yeah, so you see all this in real time. And, and in fact, uh, you get a little bit of 3D vision. It's just like watching all the time. <laughs> To wow. Wow. Whereas conventional uh, chemo surgery to, 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 to uh, give you more. Okay. Now, I think a lot of people, as you mentioned, they're, they're a little, uh, you know, perturbed by the fact that some robot is sticking his arm into my body. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> and, scary. Yeah, rather scary, though. Uh, and there is this part where they say, what if it makes a mistake? What if something goes wrong? The, the robot is totally uh, dependent on your motor. It's okay. just not programmed to be independent. So it's the operator's, yes. it, the operator has to be exactly. constantly It will only move when the operator actuated to move. Okay. What it has uh, been programmed to, so, so it has been programmed to scale down the movement. Mm -hmm. So you can sort of do cross movements and the uh, instruments is programmed to make more new movements. So you can do microscopic surgery, very precise, so, you know, stitching, work and all that. And also it can be programmed to filter tremors. Mm -hmm. So for, for patients, you know, for surgeons who are slightly tremulous, you can actually put them to the filter and the So what we're watching right now on screen is what we were explaining earlier. Yes, you can see that this is the, uh, the, the control. Right. And uh, you, your fingers are on the net. And uh -huh. you, you will see that uh, these are the robotic arms inside the stitching. So now if you look at the hand control and the, the way the needle moves, you see the hands twisting, the needle goes in. So the the, uh, the control is very intuitive. So it's, it's so precise. 
It is. It's so precise. Now, when this is done inside the body, mm -hmm. is there a camera attached to the uh, it's Okay. You do, you do you have 3D cameras inside. And it's very precise. So it has to be such that the doctor operating it has to have a steady pair of hands, isn't it? That's right. Very the, the, the surgeon is actually separate from the patients. Oh, yeah. In fact, this technology comes from the, uh, the initially from the US Armed Forces. You know, they're very reluctant to put surgeons on the better field. Yeah. And so what they were trying, uh, trying to come up with is a system where the surgeons can operate at base and you just bring the robot to the better field. So there's the support and purpose behind it. But of course, this technology was later, you know, yeah. taken on by a civilian company and it's developed into what we have today. And at the moment, there's only one system uh, in the world, uh, the, the Da Vinci, the operative uh, system. Yeah, the start we have a robot yes. 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 Uh, About the same Da Vinci operator system itself, I mean, is that something that is used here as well? Yes. And uh, is that approved? Is that an approved system? Well, it's FDA approved. FDA approved, yes. Yeah. Yes. And um, we in Malaysia, we are among the first in South Asia to obtain the Vinci system. Currently, in our country, we have a total of three systems to the other sector and the private sector. In Singapore, I think we've got something like seven small installations. Wow. Okay. What is the Da Vinci? It is so very simple. Basically, the, 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 the system must consist of a console. The, the what we saw earlier on, like that yeah. huge, huge. Yes, and then the other is the, uh, the, uh, the, the actual the actual uh, operating arm, which is on a separate unit. Okay. So basically, the patient's an anesthetized, or something in the tummy, and then you know, instruments are inserted, and the arms are connected to the instruments. And because you have a camera inside. Right. So the surgeon is basically looking at what the camera gives, you know, the deficient that the camera gives him, and he's just actuating the joysticks. So is it done um, as a one-man show or just a team of surgeons involved as um, well? Usually it's two surgeons. Okay. Because you need the surgeons next to the patients because sometimes you need to change instruments. For example, this is a repetitive process. Okay. I might want to change it to a pair of scissors. Right. Okay. And I, I you know, in a walk over to the patients and the patients think to this up and then now on the end you have the system and do that for Okay. So All right, well, scissors. speaking of scissors, we have a little bit of a break coming in. Hold your thoughts, uh, Doctor. We're not letting you go yet. We still have time with Doctor here. And if you have any questions, 2282-8578, See you in a bit. B-A-C-K, which means that we are back. You're watching Law on Tuesday with Constantine and Danny. Doctor, of course, um, our consultant urology surgeon of Hardy Street Group, Dr. Lord Chin Singh. And we can keep on talking about robotic surgery. We can call it the bionic arm boosting surgery. Right. Yeah. That too. Yeah, and that too. You know, speaking of using, um, in what cases would we you know, opt for such a method? I think this is the clearly you know, a unique adaptive chair in, in situations where there's a lack of space. Uh, very, very deep seated organs you know, to cover excess is a problem. And uh, we're very open surgery, we're looking at Distance. And when it's a very small area, it's difficult to put instruments in and build you know, instruments. So, this is a unique advantage. Yes. So, trust it. Um, you call us. Please give me a little. Please <laughs> <laughs> see me. Yeah. <laughs> I, I doubt you meant that for you. <laughs> you're, you're a bit too young. Ah, uh, there you go. Good, okay. You okay. just gave me the. <laughs> Um, and, um, and, and the heart. So, so in, in the US, for example, uh, a lot of the high body bypass are you know, uh, done using prostate and they're using the robot. So, so you know, you, you basically use a set of fluid hose and you really get that so much quicker because high bypass was in the uh, patient's attack. Hey, yeah. From this medium step to medium and very severe. Because so the robot was getting the mental. Well, let's talk about cost. I think a lot of people have that on their mind. Kachin Kachin coming your way. How expensive are, we, expensive are we talking about when we talk about a robotic surgery procedure? Well, currently, if you're less if it's a prostate, which is the most commonly used procedure in the world, you can for the robotics. In Malaysia, in the private sector, it's open uh, prostate, we will probably set you up about 25,000. Robotics are 45, 50,000. Wow. Okay. So, yeah. yes, there's a premium. So, yes, previous, the whole system costs you about 10 million. Whoa. So about 45, 50,000 for that gadget that we're looking at. 
Uh, but we're looking at speedy recovery, faster recovery. Less pain, yeah, much, much pain. less blood loss. Much less blood much loss, less. yeah. And uh, the other things, of course, in prostate, uh, some complications significantly reduce. Okay. For example, uh, you don't control is better. Right. Because after pros uh, prostatectomy, you may leak you. Right. As a robotics, is much better. And as well as uh, erectile function, oh. which of course means uh, not in some way. Okay, so uh, now to know more, of course, to all of you. Uh, yes, you want to say something to me? No. Later. Uh, on Facebook. Right, okay. So as you notice on the screen right now, uh, as Doctor mentioned earlier, you know it's a, it lesser pain, uh, not totally no pain. You know you do have a little bit of pain coming there, but definitely lesser pain, lesser blood loss, and uh, speedy recovery. So much, much more. We, what you want to look at when we look at uh, invasive surgery itself. Uh, this is probably what you want to give your loved ones if they are, you know, if you are going in for surgery, you might want to think about robotic surgery. Uh, now, doctor, big advice for you to give to our viewers out there before we wind up for the day. I think the important thing is, of course, to know that uh, to do about the availability. There's in Malaysia, you know, we, we seldom have uh, uh, treatments which are available, and you know, this information voluntarily, uh, voluntarily to the patients. And so, a lot of patients actually choose treatments because they do not realize that such a, such a treatment is available. Right. And prostatectomy in America, virtually 90% of prostatectomy are done using the difference. Okay. We are still a long way from that. Oh, well, a long way, but we're getting there. We're getting there. Oh, we're getting there. All right. So, there we go. We had Dr. Lo Chit Singh, consultant urology surgeon of Holly Street Group with us. Good afternoon, and thank you so much, Dr. It's a thank pleasure. You. Thank you for the information. All right, so stay with us, uh, Malaysia. Don't go away. Uh, we do have something coming up your way, which is, uh, you know, food, food, and food. How about this coming your way? Stephen Chiang, apparently, when a child does something. Salawak, yes, please. Salawak, yes. Okay, let's take a look.